Having successfully faked his death in his previous escapades, ex-assassin Arthur now leads a quiet life in Rio de Janeiro under an assumed identity. One day, while enjoying a meal at a nice restaurant, he is approached by René, who possesses evidence of his true identity. Representing a powerful individual, she proposes that Arthur eliminate three adversaries discreetly. Declining the offer would result in revealing Arthur's survival to criminals. Pretending to make a call, Arthur covertly captures a photo of René, prompting her to draw her gun. In response, he shoves a table against her, rejecting the proposition. René's henchmen then attack Arthur, but he skillfully defends himself using the restaurant's surroundings. Escaping by jumping onto a passing sky tram, Arthur faces a pursuit by René and her men, who board the same tram and attempt to shoot him. Opting for an unconventional escape, Arthur jumps onto the back of a hand glider. Returning to his boat in the evening, he discovers suspicious individuals inspecting it. Using a remote control, he triggers the explosives he had set up for emergencies, causing the boat to detonate and eliminating those individuals. Subsequently, he heads to an aged container where he stashed all his tools, burning his old passport and adopting a new identity. Later on, Arthur relocates to Thailand, where his longtime friend May returns his former hut. Beneath the hut floor, Arthur has concealed additional weapons and tools, initiating immediate research on René. Uncovering her affiliation with Crane, a familiar dangerous criminal, he gears up for the upcoming challenges. The following day, a woman named Gina seeks first aid supplies at May's place. Despite May noticing bruises on Gina, she declines extra assistance. As night falls, May hears screams from one of the boats and witnesses Frank violently mistreating Gina. Seeking Arthur's help, though reluctant, he acknowledges his debt to May. Upon reaching the boat, Arthur attempts to reason with Frank, who initiates an attack. Arthur defends himself, causing Frank to fall and accidentally fatally hit his head. Witnessing the scene, Gina faints, and May approaches the boat to bring her ashore. While Arthur surveys the surroundings, he stumbles upon a firearm, Gina's passport, and a phone displaying his own image. Subsequently, he ignites the boat. Returning to the hut, he rouses Gina, brandishing a gun and demanding to know if she's associated with Crane. Despite Gina's attempt to disarm him, Arthur easily subdues her and compels her to reveal the truth. Gina discloses that Crane coerced her into the mission, she doesn't actually work for him. Her role was to pose as an innocent victim to grab Arthur's attention, and Frank took his role a bit too seriously. The original plan was to approach Arthur and then contact Crane, but Arthur insists on controlling the situation. The following day, Arthur learns that Gina was formerly part of a humanitarian group aiding Cambodia. He inquires about Crane's leverage over her, and Gina explains her involvement in a shelter for human trafficking victims. Recently, a staff member disappeared, and two days later, her lifeless body was left at Gina's doorstep. Crane sent a henchman, threatening harm to the children in her care unless she accepted the mission. Later, Arthur spots a nearby boat with men observing the shore. Possibly dispatched by Crane, Arthur strolls alongside Gina, giving the impression that her mission is progressing well. May, noticing this, brings them closer through traditional Thai customs at her party, leading to a night of enjoyment for Arthur and Gina. Later, Gina apologizes for involving Arthur in the situation. Arthur empathizes, sharing his past as an orphan sold to a gangster who trained child soldiers, Crane included. While Arthur escaped, Crane didn't, and Arthur believes they blamed Crane for their predicament, driving him towards revenge. Subsequently, Gina and Arthur share a kiss and spend the night together. Arthur assures Gina that he's arranging her escape without jeopardizing the children, refusing to carry out the killings Crane demands, intending to confront Crane himself. As a token, Arthur gifts Gina his father's watch, his sole memento of the man. The following morning, police arrive, but Gina identifies one as Crane's associate. Arthur fights them off, but in the chaos, the men abduct Gina, compelling Arthur to reluctantly agree to a meeting with Crane. Shortly afterward, Crane demands three kills disguised as accidents in exchange for Gina's release. The initial target is Krill, Africa's most prominent arms dealer, currently incarcerated in a Malaysian prison. Crane instructs Arthur to ingest a pill after the kill for identification purposes. While Arthur undertakes the mission, Gina remains concealed on one of Crane's numerous boats. Arthur travels to Malaysia and investigates the prison situated atop cliffs, surrounded by shark-infested waters, making covert entry impossible. Crafting a strategy, Arthur acquires potent explosives disguised as chewing gum, shark repellent concealed in a skin cream tin, and conceals the pill within a cigarette. Additionally, he forges a fake ID, adopting the guise of a notorious wanted criminal. Upon hitting the Malaysian streets, Arthur's recognition leads to his arrest. In prison, 
the guard overseeing reception fails to detect any abnormalities in his belongings, permitting him to retain them. Initially taking it easy, Arthur engages fellow inmates to gather intel on his target. Krill, despite being incarcerated, controls all operations from within, closely monitored by his men due to numerous threats against him. Even behind bars, Krill remains the true authority of the facility. Observing a knife changing hands between prisoners, Arthur strategically bumps into them during lunch, discreetly stealing the knife. Later, when one of Krill's former associates seeks revenge, Arthur intervenes, using the stolen knife to eliminate the threat. Impressed, Krill invites Arthur to dinner, agreeing to Arthur's condition of excluding his men. That evening, Arthur is escorted from his cell to meet Krill at his private hut. Despite Krill offering a job, Arthur seizes the opportunity to attack, applying pressure to Krill's neck and ending his life. To stage it as a self-inflicted act, Arthur mixes the snake venom Krill used for rituals with his drink. Guards outside grow suspicious, but Arthur arranges Krill's body in a prayer position, diverting suspicion with the appearance of a religious moment. Subsequently, Arthur places explosive gum on a prison wall to create an opening. Swallowing the identification pill, coating himself with shark repellent, he leaps into the water before authorities apprehend him. Crane's men await him in a fishing boat, ensuring Arthur's safe escape. Crane reassures Gina's well-being in a video call and assigns Arthur his second target, Adrian Cook, an Australian-based human trafficker. Some days later, Arthur delves into his target's background. He discovers that Cook's penthouse is secure, yet it features a cantilever pool extending over the streets. To gain insight, Arthur arranges for a helicopter to observe the building from a distance. Subsequently, he feigns interest in an apartment near Cook's, using the distraction of a phone call to the realtor while capturing images of the apartment keys for duplication. Employing hazardous chemicals, Arthur crafts a compact yet potent explosive capable of breaking glass under apparent pressure. A few days later, Arthur adopts the guise of a technician to enter the building discreetly. Using the duplicated key, he gains access to the targeted apartment. Employing sophisticated tools, Arthur exits through the window, scaling the building until he reaches the pool. Creating a small opening, he inserts his specialized explosive. Although Cook spots Arthur while swimming and attempts to alert the guards, the glass begins to fracture. Arthur swiftly leaps away, sliding down the building, as the pool glass shatters, leading to Cook's fatal fall. Upon seeing Cook's demise on the news, Crane instructs his men to prepare for the upcoming video call. Gina, strategically placed near a window revealing the boat's hull number, adjusts the camera to include the window in the frame during the call. When the call begins, Gina signals Arthur by raising her hand, drawing his attention to the watch and the number on the window. The henchman notices and terminates the call, but Arthur manages to obtain the number, leading him to locate the boat. Later, Arthur directs a helicopter to tail Crane's boat, then he dives into the water with a bag of specialized equipment. After discreetly stashing the bag beneath the boat, Arthur infiltrates and systematically eliminates the crew. Unfortunately, he is spotted, leading to a hand-to-hand -hand combat with a group of thugs while Gina is removed from the room. Despite her attempts at self-defense, Gina faces challenges with her basic skills and is placed in a helicopter. Arthur seizes the opportunity by jumping on a guard, using his grenade to incapacitate pursuers while shielding himself with the guard. Regrettably, reinforcements arrive, and Arthur is tased and captured. Shortly afterward, Gina and Arthur are transported to another boat, where Crane reveals he anticipated Arthur's attempt due to his impulsive nature, yet insists on the completion of the third kill. After Crane departs, Arthur confronts the guards rather than allowing them to take him away conventionally. Subsequently, he plunges into the water, recovering his gear, including an oxygen tank and a compact engine facilitating a safe escape. Several days later, Arthur finds himself in Bulgaria, tasked with the details of his final target, Max Adams, an American arms dealer. As Arthur conducts his research, he discovers Adams' heavily fortified stronghold, housing submarines with intercontinental ballistic missiles. Realizing that these kills serve Crane's agenda to eliminate his arm dealing rivals, Arthur begins to reconsider his involvement. Later on, Arthur takes a shot at one of Adam's guards from a distance, then stealthily ascends to the rooftop of a hospital, concealing himself in an emergency helicopter. The pilot transports Arthur to Adam's fortress under the pretense of tending to the injured soldier. Exploiting the distraction, Arthur gains entry to the building. Once inside, he deploys a jammer to disrupt security cameras, systematically eliminating any guards he encounters. As the building goes on high alert, the henchmen usher Adams to his panic room. Arthur, causing malfunctions in the elevator, manages to delay their progress. When Adams reaches his room, Arthur is already present, opting not to shoot but proposing a collaboration to bring down Crane. 
Their plan kicks off with Adams simulating his demise. Later, while inspecting his submarines, Adams triggers a bomb explosion on a bridge. Arthur, poised underwater, swiftly shares an oxygen tank with Adams, guiding him to safety on a beach. On TV, Crane witnesses the news reporting Adams' apparent burial underwater beneath debris due to the explosion. Arthur promptly calls Crane, claiming the completion of the third kill. However, Crane remains skeptical until he sees the body. Assuring that the body can be found underwater, Arthur hangs up, prompting Crane to dispatch his men to locate Adam's body and eliminate Arthur. Meanwhile, Arthur returns to the submarine pen, prepping various traps. As Crane's henchmen arrive, they fall victim to the traps, while those who evade them succumb to Arthur's stealthy attacks. Realizing Arthur's approach, Crane places Gina outside his bait. Arthur navigates underwater, reaching the boat to systematically eliminate guards. Crane observes him on security footage and hastily orders his men to retrieve Gina just before Arthur dismantles the cameras. Gina attempts to resist the guard who seized her, sustaining a stomach wound. Subsequently, the guard shoves her into the jacuzzi for Crane to apprehend. While Arthur persists in battling the remaining guards, Crane escorts Gina inside, triggering an explosive concealed in the boat. Departing to flee in his rescue boat, Crane leaves behind a chaotic scene. In a split second, Arthur locates Gina and discovers the bomb. Swiftly, he secures Gina in an emergency release pod and sends her away. Arthur then pursues Crane, eliminating the last guards before engaging in a hand-to-hand -hand confrontation. Using the anchor chain, Crane attempts to ensnare Arthur's leg, but Arthur turns the tables, binding Crane to the boat. Despite Crane's laughter, insinuating Arthur's impending demise, Arthur remains composed and dashes inside just before the bomb detonates. Observing the boat's destruction and fire, Gina grieves for Arthur's presumed death. Fortunately, the explosion reveals their location, leading to Gina's rescue by the Coast Guard. From the shore, Adams, noting something peculiar about the salvaged boat pieces, also observes a nearby security camera. Several weeks later, Gina returns to Cambodia with the children and expresses gratitude to May for donating a water filter in a letter. One afternoon, while occupied with teaching, she's astonished to discover Arthur is alive and has visited her. Simultaneously, Adams investigates Crane's boat, discovering that the model includes a diving bell providing trapped air for underwater breathing. With a hypothesis formed, Adams reviews the security footage, confirming Arthur's escape by concealing himself in the diving bell. Impressed by the ingenuity of this strategy, Adams erases the footage to safeguard Arthur's future. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.